Hello traders, this is Chris from AAAFX taking a look at the upcoming week of December 25th uh, coming uh, at you with the calendar first. Obviously, we have uh, Monday, which of course is Christmas. That means almost every banking system in the world is closed, um, at least in the Western world and the big banks. So obviously Monday is, even if you were to have the ability to trade, not really a day worth being bothered with. Tuesday still sees quite a few central banks around the world closed, including the Canadian, uh, British, and European banks. Swiss banks are all closed. So again, Tuesday, probably not a lot of liquidity. Once we get into Wednesday, you get the... Um, Richmond Manufacturing Index, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. And the reason I say that is recently we've seen um, better than anticipated numbers coming out of the United States from an uh, economic standpoint. The Richmond uh, Index is basically the Southeast. It's not as prescient as like the Industrial Rust Belt, but it is a part of the U.S. economy that's worth paying attention to. It's probably a mid-level announcement. Thursday, we have the weekly unemployment claims number coming out of the United States and pending home sales. Pending home sales will be interesting. They are expecting it to rise to 1.1% uh, month over month instead of the loss of 1.5%. As an American, I can tell you that the old, uh, the, the whole um, real estate sector is kind of a mess right now because you have a situation where most homeowners are in mortgages of about three and a half percent. But if you try to get a new home, you're looking closer to eight. And then on top of that, if you are locked into a three and a half percent, why would you sell and go pick up a huge uh, bump in your monthly payment in the housing sector? is a huge part of the United States economy. It, it branches off into many other companies, um, transactions, etc. So always a major part of the equation. We have natural gas and crude oil inventories or natural gas storage, crude oil inventories later in the day on Thursday that can move those particular markets. But right now I would anticipate you're going to have a hard time seeing a lot of movement this week just simply due to the fact that we have no red letter economic announcements. And most traders, most professional traders, with Monday being Christmas and the following Monday being um, uh, New Year's Day, it uh, most of them aren't even going to be involved. The Spanish Flash CPI year over year comes out on Friday and the Chicago PMI a reasonable mid-level announcement comes out on Friday as well. But again, I think we'll be hard-pressed to see a lot of traders paying attention to these announcements. And if you look at the calendar here, none of them are red level. So it'll be interesting to see this week probably going to be a bit of a dud as far as market moving events. However, we have seen quite a few things change recently. And I think we'll see more of the same kind of little bit of follow-through. So as I start to look at the uh, trading charts, I will start over here. I have the British pound Swiss franc weekly chart. You can see that we are approaching the 1.08 level. I think this is a pretty significant support level. We'll have to see how this plays out. You can see just how low we are. This has been like controlled demolition here on the monthly chart. Whether or not we continue to go lower remains to be seen, but if we break 108, I think it does offer a flood of selling. This may not be British pound related, maybe more or less a run to the Swiss franc. So keep that in mind. The NASDAQ 100 continues to defy gravity. We'll go ahead and insert a 20 period moving average, and you can see it has been somewhat reliable. Market participants really have driven this thing up Sooner or later, somebody's going to want to take serious profit. And that might be part of what this candlestick was 
on Wednesday. I would expect a few more like that between now and New Year's. The problem is you don't really know when it happens. Your most bullish case scenario is to go sideways. Pullbacks at this point in time could open up a move down to 16,100, but, and, and, and I truly hope that happens. That offers enough value that you can get involved. Uh, but we'll we'll wait and see. That might be something that happens in January as well. Regardless, you can't be a seller. The Japan 225 or the Nikkei 225 continues to be kind of sideways here. If you look at it through the prism of the weekly chart, you can see that we are breaking out of a bullish flag. We kind of came back and tested it, and now it looks like we want to go higher. The key is, can we overcome 34,000 yen? If and when we do then that would be a sign that we are going much, much higher. And there is the real possibility of stock markets around the world melting up due to perceived central bank weakness. British pound, U.S. dollar, very choppy. Um, I think it's starting to become more and more obvious that somewhere around 127.50 uh, is an area worth watching. Kind of interesting, really, because I remember this from what seems like 100 years ago being an important level. These levels return time and time again. We are banging up against it. If we can take out 128, then it opens up the door to 131 and a half. Short-term pullbacks will more likely than not continue to attract buyers, at least until we would break down below 125. I don't see that happening, but a lack of liquidity can make bizarre moves pop up out of the blue. Dow Jones 30 looks bullish again, though. And if you look over at the um, December 26th outlook uh, video for the Dow Jones 30, I stated 37,000 could be support for a sideways move, but I really would love to see 36,000 or 35,000. Could get a bit of a sell-off over the holiday week uh, just due to lack of interest. I would love that because this is a market that's going to continue to go higher based on Federal Reserve liquidity, but obviously it's very difficult to, ch to chase it all the way up here. At the very least, we need to see it bounce around in this area. FTSE 100 has recently tested the 7780-ish level, an area that's been important in the past. We do see a lot of resistance in this area. I expect to see pullbacks bought into. I don't necessarily expect to see the FTSE take off. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. If I go to the weekly chart, you can see this is an area that's been difficult. If we can break the, and I'm just going to call it for simplicity's sake, 7,800 level, then I think we go quite a bit higher. But right now, um, I think we're still building the case for a breakout. The DAX basically has forgotten gravity. It'll be interesting to see if we get a pullback here. Certainly have the setup for some weakness, but that weakness is something that would be bought into. Would not sell this market. Um, this type of move generally has follow through. I mean, there it is there. We had a bit of a pullback and took off there. Pullback, take off. You know, these type of impulsive moves happen for a reason. You know, you don't want to get too cute and try to short it. But then again, I don't want to buy it up here. You have to think of it this way. It's not at value at all. U.S. dollar plunged against the Swiss franc. Looking at a monthly chart, you can see just how bad this is looking. Um, you know, we're looking like the last time we were here was about 2011. Looks like we're probably going lower. In the short term, though, I do think that rallies will be sold closer to the 0 0.87 level. So I'm looking at this here as a potential selling opportunity. The hammer on Friday does suggest that we're going to get a little bit of a recovery. Is this the bottom? I, I kind of doubt it, truthfully. U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar plunges again, turns around to show signs of life. Looks like this is a pretty significant area of support. Now, keep in mind, the Canadian dollar might be a little different against the U.S. dollar due to oil. And oil doesn't look that great right now. Um, I think it's in the process of bottoming, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, but really, it's got some work to do. 
S&P 500 did rally on Friday heading into the Christmas week. Uh, probably due for a pullback much like the um, NASDAQ 100. I see 4,700 as an area of short-term support. So again, I think this is going to be like the NASDAQ where um, you you could probably count on sideways action. But what you really want to see is a pullback. Whether or not we get it, you're going to have to wait and see. But again, you can't sell it. Over here in the crude oil market, you can see we are struggling with 75 in the U.S., grade when i pull up the weekly chart you can see i mean we are forming a bit of a base and i think part of this is that people are expecting central bank liquidity to come and bail everybody out if that actually happens then the idea is of course that the economic situation in several countries around the world should improve if we take out 75 to the upside 50-day EMA comes in as resistance, 72.5 as support, 68 becoming a bit of a floor. Brent or UK oil, same situation. We're threatening 80. We do have the 50-day EMA sitting just above, offering a bit of resistance. Down here at about 78 support. Anything below there could open up a move to $72. But again, I think it's probably going to take some momentum to make that happen. Australian dollar, you can see the weekly chart. We are getting to an area that could cause some trouble. Notice that we had a very neutral candlestick on Friday. Likely to see a little bit of a pullback and then an attempt to get to the 0.69 level. When you look at 0.69 on a longer term chart, you can see that it does have some influence. We are at a make it or break it point for the US dollar against the Aussie dollar. You can make an argument that there is a bit of a trend line right there. So it has to hold for the downtrend to continue. But having said that, I think the interest rates situation is going to continue to be a major issue. With the Federal Reserve moving their dot plot for 2024, rates are expected to be lower. And I think the Aussie will benefit. You know, is the Australian dollar the first currency you run to? Maybe not, but... The U.S. dollar isn't. Now, if we get some type of risk-off environment, perhaps due to a slowdown in the global economy, like people are truly worried about, then we could see the Aussie get absolutely hammered. But really, when you look at what we've done over the last several weeks, it's obvious that something is going on. So I think 69 kind of ties, 0.69 ties in quite nicely, especially as the 200-day EMA, uh, or 200-week EMA, sorry, is heading in that direction. Dollar yen. Now, this is a market that I think is going to be very frustrating to deal with. And the reason, of course, is, again, the dot plot in the U.S. is suggesting that lower interest rates are coming in 2024. But at the same time, the Bank of Japan does absolutely nothing to tighten its monetary policy. So you have a fight between a couple of lightweights. If we break down below the previous week's candlestick at 141, I anticipate that this pair goes to 137-ish, maybe 137 and a half. On the other hand, if we do turn around and break 145, then 147.33 is in the cards. I think the next, maybe not this next week, but the week after that is going to be very pivotal for this pair. This next week, like I said, could just be a short-term back and forth type of situation where we are... Um, just trying to sort out liquidity issues. Ethereum has rallied rather significantly during the trading session on Friday to end the week. And the week ended up forming a nice hammer. And I think most of your big gains in 2024 probably coming from crypto. And the reason I say that is the situation is kind of perfect, at least as things stand right now. You have central banks loosening monetary policy and crypto cannot function without loose money because you need hot money to invest in these startups. Ethereum has tested 2100. It's turned around. Now the question is, can it take out 2400? I don't see any reason why it won't. And I would even put... Um... A bit of a triangle right here 
And if you take this in the measured move, in theory at least, you should be going to about 3,400, maybe a little lower than that, 3,350. So, you know, does it happen in the next week? Probably not, but you continue to buy dips right around 2,100. As long as we stay above 2,000, I think a lot of traders will be very comfortable. Bitcoin pulled back a little bit on Friday, but it looks similar. I think it's got a shorter runway, though. I think 47,500 is ultimately where we end up. 40,000 would be support, followed by about 38,000. This typically leads Ethereum, but Ethereum's got some catching up to do. So I think that's what we may see next. Silver ended up selling off pretty significantly late in the session on Friday. And the weekly candlestick doesn't look as strong as it once did. What this tells me is that we may not be quick to test 26 quite yet. I think what we probably might have here, let me go ahead and get rid of these lines for now. And I think what we might have in the silver market is a potential range forming again. And that's not uncommon with metals markets. Twenty-two to twenty-six, and and we're kind of like right in the middle. Twenty-four is fair value. I would call this a very neutral trend at the moment. Gold looked really strong to kick off Friday, and we blasted all the way to two thousand seventy, and then gave it back, and ended up forming still a bullish candlestick for the week. But, uh, you know, it's not as like had we closed at the top of this, it would be much more confident. If we can take out twenty seventy five, two thousand seventy five dollars, we will start to work away at some of the noise that was found during that ridiculous wick uh, on December 4th. Short term pullbacks, I still think have plenty of buyers underneath all the way down to at least two thousand. Keep an eye on the 10 year yield. If the 10 year yield starts rising then you will see gold pay the price. On the other hand, if the 10-year yield starts falling, that does tend to help the gold market. And over here in the euro, you can see we just kind of sputtered out during the day at 110 on Friday. Take a look at the weekly chart. We're, we are at an important area. There's really no two ways to put it. And I think you're going to have to look at this through the prism of whether or not we can break out and if we can, then you have to see follow through. Right now, I don't see follow through. Doesn't mean we have to melt down or anything, but I would not be surprised at all to see a little bit of a pullback here on the daily chart and then eventually take out like 110 and a half. And once we do, that opens up about 200 pips to 112 and a half, which is this area up here. Again, this is going to come down to the bond markets. ECB recently stated that they were not anywhere near thinking about cutting rates. They're still worried about inflation. Well, the Federal Reserve, of course, went from not even thinking about discussing cutting rates to 12 days later moving the dot plot. So clearly something has the Fed spooked. And that's interesting because it can cause people to run to the dollar for safety if there's something really ugly out there. I think the next week's probably going to be more or less like I had described, where we might pull back a little bit and just kind of hang out here. But once we get liquidity back after New Year's, things are going to get really interesting in this pair. And this will give you an idea as to how the dollar is going to behave against almost everything. And, and remember, if you get the dollar right, you get most things right. Most things are priced in dollars. If the dollars go down, generally your stocks will go up. Your commodities will go up. Obviously, other currencies will go up. If the dollar starts showing, starts showing strength, then you look for really weak currencies to trade it against. For example, 110 continues to be crucial. The uh, lackluster close in this and the gold market tells me that we weren't quite ready to take off and start shorting the dollar any more drastically than it had already been done. And again, I cannot stress this enough pay attention to the yield in the 10-year note in america i could give you an idea as to how the financial markets themselves will be behaving because quite frankly everything runs off of the bond market uh, by the time it's all said and done so with that being the case uh, the holiday season again is going to have a very serious lack of liquidity so you're going to have to be cautious about that obviously monday is christmas day so not a, really a day in the trading markets. 
Tuesday, about half the European banks are closed, so that comes into the picture as well. 